Hello, I'm Spod from the planet Thryn, and this is all I do. <laughs> Pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> 21st Century, in association with Worldwide Distribution Services, a subsidiary of Intercontinental Video, presents a remarkable enterprise's production. Captain, Captain Kremen. Kremen. You're the only man alive that can handle this mission, Kremen. I know, sir. It's up to you to save my empire, Captain. Yes, Your Majesty. Do you realize, Kremen, that the fate of the continental United States is in your hands? Fear not, Mr. President. It's not for nothing that they call me... The world's most fabulous man. Computer readout. Subject, Captain Elvis Brandenburg Kremen. Born December 25th, 1950. Height, 6 foot 10. Physical attributes, supreme athlete, concert pianist, concord pilot, mountain climber, diplomat, space captain, and genius. IQ, 498. Hi, kids. Kremen here. You remember last time, Gort, leader of the Thargoids, banished us to Sunaru 9 to spend the rest of our lives digging in the mud mines. Well, have fun in the mud, you three. <laughs> you evil nerd. I summoned up a whopper and spat in his eye. <laughs> You'll pay for this, Kremen. How much? 50 p. Done. Guards hustled us out of the throne room and bundled us into an auto-drive galactopod with just enough fuel for a one-way trip to Sonaro 9. The ship rose slowly into the green night sky and slipped effortlessly away. Captain, I really don't think you should have spat in his eye like that. You're right, Carla. I should have stuck my foot up his nostril instead. I know, but look what's ahead of us now. Banished forever to a radioactive lump of mud. Well, at least we won't be lacking for company, Captain. What do you mean? There are other people on this moon, you know. Really? Who are they? Many years ago, Captain, the Thargoids ran out of natural sources of energy, just as the Earth did in 1994. Mm -hmm. And just like us, they looked for other ways of obtaining it. Well, it certainly looks like they succeeded. Indeed. They discovered that one of their moons, Sonaru 9, was entirely made of radioactive mud, just right for converting into power. So they sent teams of workers to dig it out. Don't tell me. The radioactivity reduced them into mumbling, brainless dum-dums. Yes, Captain. And they are hoping the same will happen to us. <gasps> well, how are our heroes going to get out of this mess? Find out in part two of the Kenny Everett Video Show. Hello. Spod here again from Planet Thin. Here's an old friend of mine, a cosmic buddy, Captain Kremen. He's not as good as me, though. He doesn't go... <laughs> Hi, space fans. Kremen again. Remember in part one, we were heading for Sunaru 9, the radioactive mud planet. Is there no protection against this radioactivity? The only thing that really works is to dress from head to foot in pure silver. But we haven't got any. Well, what's the closest thing to silver, Captain? The Lone Ranger's bum, Carla. Oh. A few hours later, we arrived. We looked out of the porthole and saw it there below us. It was a moon about the size of Earth's, but brown, wet, and yucky. Suddenly, the fuel ran out, and we plummeted down to the surface. these space wellies on. Oh, Captain, look out there. A reception committee. Sure enough, coming towards us through the mud was a group of radioactive mud men. Limping, twisted lumps that once had been human, now nargled beyond recognition. Oh, Captain, look. That one's got three knees. Their leader opened up a hole in his head and spoke. <laughs> What did he say, Doc? He said it's extremely difficult to talk. It's extremely difficult to talk to you with a mouthful of mud. Well, tell him to spit it out. Spit it out. 
thanks. As the doctor stood there with a mud Gilbert sliding down the front of his spacesuit, I measured Carla for radioactivity. Oh, oh. Golly, Carla. What? According to this Geiger counter, you've got far too many Geigers. Oh, Captain, if I die, you can have my hi-fi and the keys to my flat and all my expensive collection of doobries. Carla, and... I wouldn't let you die. You know that. And my life-size fuzzy bear doll. And... Carla! And this handy-dandy transistorized escape kit. Carla, there's no way that I... What? Escape kit? Did you say escape kit? Yes, Captain. I always carry it with me. You know the scrapes a girl can get into. Do you think it'll work in radioactive mud? I don't know. I forgot to ask the guy I bought it off. Well, let's give it a whirl, Carla. Okay. It might get us out of here. Well, will it? Tune in next week, space fans, for the next fab adventure of Kremen, King of the Cosmos! Mm -hmm.